Hey there, gang. Sean here. Welcome to Sean and Lisa Build a Home, Episode 1. This uh, channel, uh, I hope you're going to enjoy, uh, is basically a vlog of my partner Lisa and I building our dream home on Lowborough Lake, north of Kingston, Ontario, in Canada. Uh, we have a 5.68 acre parcel of property on the lake with a thousand feet of waterfront and we are going to build our dream home here. Uh, the problem being Lisa and I have no idea what we're doing. So we thought it might be fun, uh, informative, and a great way to keep track of uh, our adventures as we build our home. Sorry a bit about the background noise, our generator's running. Uh, we closed on the lot about two weeks ago and we've currently been living here with permission up until the close we needed permission we've been living here for just over a month now off grid uh, because we were lucky enough to sell our property our other home uh, at the height of the market uh, Lisa is a real estate agent and a school teacher and uh, she is the brains behind this entire operation so uh, anyways that's uh, you'll, you'll see that in the future but uh, welcome to the channel and uh, you know, uh, hope you enjoy what you see. So what you're going to see on this channel is uh, Lisa and I trying to navigate the difficult terrain of trying to get all the permits and do all the things and coordinating with our builder to uh, build our dream home. We're also going to see a lot about dump trailers, Kubota tractors, chainsaws, clearing land, a little bit of living off grid. Uh, it's going to be a mix of everything and uh, just want to make sure I point out in the beginning we're no by m no means experts at any of this stuff. We're basically just flying by the seat of our pants and anytime you have any comments, help, opinions, you can leave them in the comments below and uh, maybe that'll help us figure things out as we go. So uh, I'm just unloading uh, the trailer here. I've got a snow plow and some stuff in here. I'm just unloading to get ready. Uh, to load up our water tank and septic stuff uh, to do the weekly run. So uh, that's always fun. So like I said earlier, we moved here about a month ago because we sold our primary residence. And we've been living in an old travel trailer that we renovated actually. Uh, we spent $2,500 and renovated this trailer. I'll uh, give you a tour of it some other day right now, other than some other day. but. Uh, it's an interesting way to live off-grid. Uh, it's not what I would have chose actually in the beginning, but we've got a bit of a system now and it's working out okay. So, like I said, here's the property. Now this is just a piece of it, the elevated building portion. There's a peninsula into the lake, We've got a beautiful dock, we've got a barge, we've got a lot of things set up out there that we'll show you eventually as time goes on. Uh, and uh, this is our trailer. Now it's not much to look at, but on the inside it's quite beautiful. We've already got a 10 by 10 shed here that actually in the long term is going to be our dog house. We have two Great Danes, Vern and Eugene, and you'll get to see them as the channel progresses as well. Uh, just a little bit about me. So I do have another career, we'll get to that at some other point in time. And, uh, but my passion and love has turned into be, you know, focused towards photography and videography. And uh, I follow a lot of great guys that uh, that's what they focus on. And uh, Peter McKinnon, Matty Hapoya, um, there's a whole bunch of them. Anyways. I thought about doing a vlog about cameras and photography and doing that sort of stuff, but I decided that, you know what, this might be more interesting. So I'm not going to focus on camera angles and, 
and uh, fancy transitions, anything like that. It's going to be raw run and gun footage, but uh, hopefully you'll uh, enjoy our journey. Uh, Lisa's at work today, or she'd be in today's video, but uh, we just decided that the time had come that it was time to just get going on this. So as we go through these episodes, hopefully the production value will get better, uh, but uh, bear with us. Hey there guys, Future Sean here, and I'm uh, just actually going through and editing some of this stuff and finally putting it together, and it looks pretty rough, and it's pretty crappy, so I thought I'd give a brief explanation. Lisa and I decided, uh, you know, quite a few months ago, uh, last winter almost, to do this channel. And we've had a lot of stuff going on, and we shot some video, and we didn't do anything with it, and then I lost some of the footage, and then I decided to shoot some video last minute, and this is what it was. I had a camera with me with a wide angle lens and I didn't have all the settings right and I just did it. And I was going to throw it away actually because I've already shot episode 2, which I used a cell phone to shoot actually. And then episode 3, which is coming up, uh, I've got a little bit more of a better system. But I thought without posting some of this stuff it wouldn't all make sense. So bear with me. I know the footage isn't fantastic, but if you listen along uh, at least you'll get an idea of... Uh, what the whole story is. So uh, there we go. So a couple things. When you're living off grid in a trailer, there are three basic things you need that you take for granted when you live in a regular home. One, electricity. If you look under that blue, right over there, it's a blue umbrella. That's one of our generators. And uh, that's what we use to supply ourselves electricity right now until the hydro is bought into the lot. There's actually a trench already dug for the hydro, but it's not in yet. The other thing is water. You can't survive without it. And this is how we get it. We have a thousand liter water tote that uh, I take roughly once every week, week and a half, to uh, Napanee, a, a local city, and uh, I fill up the uh, water and bring it back. And then we use a transfer system that is basically a small sprinkler pump with hoses. And we use this to uh, pump the water from this thousand liter tank into the back of the trailer. So that's hydro and water. And the third thing that no one ever wants to talk about is sewage. Uh, when you're living off grid, we at this point don't have an outdoor outhouse or incinerator toilet or a composting toilet. So we use the washroom in the trailer because it's a great setup. Shower, we have a washroom in there, everything, washer dishes, all that stuff. Uh, but all of the sewage then needs to be taken in this blue wagon and dumped. So uh, that's what today's lucky job is. So uh, you get to watch that fun. Okay, so here's the process. I basically take this sprinkler pump that I got at Princess Auto. It was on sale for $99. I have a, a suction line that goes down into the tank and then I use a garden hose to feed it over to the trailer. The 2x4 is just to keep the hose from kinking because it always seems to end up getting kinked on me. And then, basically, I plug that pump into the generator and then at this far end, that hose, which is now hopefully pumping water, oh yay, I take it, put it in the back of the trailer to fill the trailer tank. It's a crude system, but it actually works really well. So once a day I come out and top the tank up because we already have had one incident where in the very beginning I wasn't judging the amount of water and uh, ran out mid-shower. And there's nothing like trying to rinse soap out of long hair with cold bottled water. It was not my finest moment. Eventually, when the hydro gets run along the trench over there to the hydro box and we get hydro, we actually already do have a well here. So the wellhead is right here. We'll be able to add a well pump 
and then we'll have hydro and water and only have to worry about sewage. So basically I stand here and wait till the tank's full and then I shut down everything. So, that's basically how I load that little sewage wagon. I, uh, for a period of time, had it sitting on a pallet and I used my Kubota B2601 uh, to lift it in and out, but to be honest, it's too high with the pallet to work underneath the connection to the trailer and it takes too long to strap it up and put it on and lift it and change implements on the tractor. So. Uh, I basically just threw all these two boards in the truck and uh, use it as a ramp. Simple. All right, so we're all loaded up. We're in the truck, towing the dump trailer with our water tote and sewage container. And we're on our way to Napanee uh, to dump the sewage and fill up the water for the week. And Napanee's roughly, you know, a little over a half an hour, probably roughly a half an hour, 40 minute drive from the lot. There are probably some local, you know, more local places to deal, but uh, I can do both of these in one run there. Uh, a thousand liters of potable water is two dollars, so, you know, it, it's a pretty great way. And Napanee is also the uh, small town where Lisa teaches at the uh, local high school and her uh, stepmother, so my step, how's that go? Stepmother-in-law uh, lives in Napanee as well. So today, I'm actually gonna go do all that stuff uh, and then meet them for dinner. So uh, that is today's plan. Now just to fill you in a little bit uh, on the lot that I you know, briefly spoke about, it's uh, 5.68 acres, it's on Loughborough Lake. Just shy, it's like 996 feet or something of waterfront coverage. Um, it's a beautiful lot. It does have its challenges and uh, we will, uh, you know, I'll show you that stuff later. Uh, we've got some systems worked out to uh, make it work for us, for sure. Um, but probably the most difficult part about this uh, subdivision that is being built there, it's a uh, been going on for, I believe, roughly 10 years to get approvals and go everything. It's been highly contested at one point um, because it's in the Frontenac biosphere. Uh, so we need to uh, follow some incredibly strict rules uh, to make sure that we you know, don't disturb uh, certain animals and stuff like that. So, uh, but. To be honest, that's one of the reasons why Lisa and I bought there. We both wanted to live in a place, along the water, in the woods, with lots of trees, lots of animals, so we're quite excited about it. It's uh, definitely made for some large hurdles to get past, but uh, you know what? In the long run, it'll be well worth it. Now, sometimes I lose sight of that <laughs> once in a while as we're going through this process, but uh, I know, uh, in the video, probably God knows when it'll be, six, eight, 10, 12 months from now when our house is finished, uh, I'm sure you'll see a smile on my face at that point. So, anyways, stick with us. Uh, that's probably enough for today's episode. And uh, tomorrow I think I'm going to uh, be uh, 
chopping up some of the dead trees that are down on the lot uh, and uh, using the tractor and stuff. So uh, I'll catch up with you then. Have a great night. See you.